Aloha everybody, Sean at Aloha Pigeons and this will be the second update on the 2018 Youngbird season. <laughs> It's been about two weeks since our first round of birds started to hatch. So in total we have 25 birds at this time in the nest. And of course one thing you'll need to consider when breeding birds is how old those birds are going to be when you start putting the rings on their legs. So normally it's going to be about four to seven days depending on how fast that chick is growing. So in that case you're just going to have to monitor the chick's growth um, from day to day. And somewhere where it gets to about four days, you're going to want to pay a little bit closer attention to how big the foot of that bird is because these rings, in this case this is a normal ring, um, will only fit over that bird's foot up until a certain size. Uh, normally for me, that's about seven days at the max. <laughs> So in this uh, nest box, we have a pair of pigeons that have about three to four day old pigeons in, in the nest. So this is when I start to look at the birds to see how fast they're growing and see whether or not they're ready for bands. So what I do is depending on what leg I want to put the band on, I'll face the bird away from me. I'll just leave it in the nest bowl or on something flat, something where it's not going to fall down. And then I'll take the leg of the bird and I'll gently move it back. Okay, I'm not squeezing the bird's foot too much or anything so that the three toes are facing me. And what I'll do is I'll put the three toes into the band first and I'll slide it up the leg of the bird. And what you'll see is you have this last toe that's facing the other direction. So what you're going to have to do is either gently move that toe out like that or if you can and the bird's foot is a little bit too big you can use a toothpick to help get between your, the leg of the bird and the toe so that you can bend it out and then that's it that's the band on the bird's leg and you're good to go and what you'll do is you'll just monitor to make sure that band doesn't come off in this case this bird is a little bit small and I know it's a it's it's not ready and one way you can test that is is it going to be easy to just pull the band off normally if the, the the foot of the bird is big enough it won't come off because this toe is too large but in this case, you can see it easily comes off again. So I'm going to check this bird uh, tomorrow and maybe in a day or two actually. And we'll see if he's ready for a band and then we'll try again. <music> So pigeons are one of the few birds that actually produce a crop milk and this crop milk is um, not really the food that the birds eat. Um, it's something that's produced within the bird itself. Um, they start, scientists say they start producing it about two days before the eggs hatch. Um, so that's important to know as well when it comes to using foster parents. There's only three birds that I know of um, that produce crop milk. One of them is pigeons. The other one is flamingos and the third is emperor, um, emperor penguins. So it is kind of a rare phenomenon and it is important. So that crop milk, uh, much like other uh, milk that you'll find from mammals, you know, it has the correct protein, fat, carbohydrates, and most importantly, the correct antibodies. And that helps the pigeon to be healthy as it grows. Um, so if you were to hand raise a bird, I'm sorry, hand raise a pigeon, um, from it hatching from the egg, it can be done. Um, however, you risk that pigeon not growing as quickly as it should and not getting all the antibodies and being as healthy as it should be. That in mind, um, scientists have done studies and they have found that pigeons produce crop milk for anywhere from 7 to 10 days after the chicks have hatched. So that means for 7 to 10 days, they're feeding some ratio of crop milk to their young. And as it gets closer to that 7 day, 10 day mark, 
it's less and less crop milk, more and more just feed that you give the birds. So let's take a second and talk about droppings and the health of your chicks in your nest. So if the droppings of your chicks are really watery, green, slimy, um, that's an indication that they have some sort of um, illness. So it could be anything from canker or anything else or E. coli problems. So what, what you want to look for, you want to pay attention to the droppings that are around the nest or within the nest. And you want to see droppings that are something like this. Something that has a definite shape, that isn't too wet, relatively firm, and will roll like that. <laughs> And this is a fresh dropping. I just, I just um, cleaned all these nest boxes. So if you see droppings like that, you know you're on the right track. If you don't see droppings like that, you might want to think about um, using anything like electrolytes, probiotics, or treating the birds with something that's safe for chicks as well. And another important factor for the health of your chicks and your birds in general is grit. Grit is very important for um, pigeons. So it's going to help their digestive process as well as they're going to get a lot of minerals and so on. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of what I do to keep my breeders healthy while they're raising chicks and as well as the chicks healthy. So obviously I'll have water. This water has apple cider vinegar in it in about uh, two tablespoons per gallon ratio of water. And then I also have a small piece of garlic in there as well. Uh, my food, uh, it's a little bit higher protein for when they're raising young. Um, I have a few different types of grit. This grit has a lot of different stuff in it. It has uh, oyster shells uh, for calcium, uh, different types of rock, pink mineral. And then this one is um, a different form of grit. It's actually a pick stone that I just break up. They like that as well. And then this is pink mineral powder. This is especially important for the breeders. They love this. Um, you'll see a lot of that disappears in one day. Um, but most importantly is to keep your grit fresh. So they get new grit every day because depending where you live, if it's um, high humidity or the grit gets wet, they're not going to like it as much as they're going to like uh, fresh, dry grit. I have a bird to show you. Uh, it's one of my hand-raised birds. Watch how vicious this guy is when it comes to guarding, <laughs> guarding his nest. You can see his chicks up there. He, I mean, he's a good parent. He just doesn't like me anymore, that's for sure. And there's one last minute change I wanna make before the 2018 young bird season. And recently, my family was able to help me out with that. Yep, I couldn't believe it. We were able to move my racing loft. And why did we move the loft? So the past two seasons, I've had this loft and it can house probably maybe 35 young birds um, in good health. Obviously I can crab more birds in there. That doesn't mean that they're gonna be healthy. So the plan is to have, to start off the season with more birds. So this season, I hope to start with about 50 young birds. And in order to do that, I need to increase the size of my loft. So in order to do that as well, I needed to shift it. A, it's going to be pointing south. That's good. B, now I can extend the loft into my yard more. So actually, what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to duplicate the loft we have now, and it's going to be attached to the existing loft. So just envision this, but twice the size. And what's Third, most important about that is now I'm going to be using the sliding door method. The sliding door method allows you to separate your cocks and hens. And the sliding door method is going to help me to motivate the birds to return. But most importantly, I'm going to be able to start the season with more birds. And there's been a lot of people asking me how I clean my loft underneath my stock loft. Well, <laughs> so what I do is I just put a little bit of bird seed in areas where I want them to clean up and then they'll turn over the dirt so 
that's how the 2018 young bird season is going. It's going fairly well. I'll continue to pass on any tips that I've learned in the past two years. Again, most of these tips are for the new racer. I'm not trying to teach anybody that's been in this sport for 30 years. But I hope you enjoyed. And you can do me a favor by clicking this button right now if you haven't subscribed already. Or leave a comment or a thumbs up. It'll help me reach more people in the community. Alright, Sean from Aloha Pigeons, Aloha.